In this paper, uh, we formally describe uh, two species of hammerhead flatworms. One species was uh, collected from France and Italy, and the other uh, is from the uh, French island of Mayotte uh, in the Indian Ocean. The, the, the discovery of the, 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 this new species of uh, uh, flatworm that we discovered was kind of a casual discovery, as many of the other invasive species that we found in Europe. Um, the funny thing was that uh, I received a, an email from a, from a person, a private person that simply told me, well, I have this kind of unusual freaky animal that is appearing every morning in front of my house. Could you please come and check for what it is? So I just replied to the call. I was very excited about it because I, I wasn't expecting something special really. But by the time I went there, I mean, I got a very unusual and, and great discover. I arrived in, the, in, the, in this, this house that is uh, close to the countryside in the Treviso province in the early morning. It was a very foggy and, and cloudy and very cold morning. And at the beginning, nothing, nothing was happening. But as soon as the, the sun started eating a bit the surface of the house, you could see thousands, I mean, thousands of flatworms coming out from the garden and then sliming up to the up to the house and to the house entrance. And that was totally unexpected. I mean, something that I've never seen before. And the, the first thing that I thought was immediately start collecting, picking up specimens. And I was able to, to collect both live and dead specimens. And I suddenly sent all this material to Jean Lou that as soon as he got the material, he said, wow, this is something never seen before. We definitely need to describe it. I am uh, Jean-Louis Justin. I am basically a parasitologist uh, with a long career, uh, beginning in uh, 1978. And I am mainly a specialist of uh, parasites of fish. I am a member of the uh, National Museum of Natural History uh, in Paris since the 1985 and a professor since uh, 1995. Uh, in 2013, a colleague uh, forwarded to me a photograph of a very strange animal uh, found in a garden. And I realized that there was an invasion of uh, these animals progressing in France and Europe and that nobody uh, was working on them. Uh, that was not my field, but um, I decided to consecrate some of my, some of my time uh, to this subject. Uh, I sought for international collaborations, and we ended up making, uh, well, uh, astonishing discoveries on these land flatworms. Uh, so far, uh, we have published uh, six long papers about these land flatworms, all of them in PRJ. Uh, there are two main parts in this research. Um, first, a traditional part of taxonomy and description of new species. Uh, this was made, made on specimens we collected since uh, 2013, and most of the work was done by Leigh Windsor in Australia. He is one of the uh, few scientists in the world uh, who can describe the internal anatomy of these animals. I'm an adjunct zoologist in the um, College of Science and Engineering at James Cook University in North Queensland, um, in Australia. I've, for the last 40 odd years, I've been working on land planarians, uh, mainly Australian and New Zealand species, looking at their um, biogeography, systematics, and their taxonomy. But I also have an interest in invasive and alien species in countries overseas, because quite often, they'll be Australian or New Zealand species that have hitched a ride. Um, land planarians have few external morphological features that are reliable. This is not a real one, but an example that it's a smooth, shiny um, species that uh, moves around. There's not much to see apart from the color, position of body apertures and perhaps eyes and the shape of its head. Um, so that these aren't necessarily reliable characters. And uh, 
ideally, we study mature species by histological methods, looking at them anatomically. The big problem with them is that their organs are embedded in parenchyma, parenchymous tissue, and it's difficult to dissect this. So you must um, prepare them in such a way to cut thin sections, such as these ones here, that um, numerous sections right through the, the worm, and then you reconstruct the anatomy um, from serial tracings. There's two new species, one of which has been sectioned in that way. The other one, there was insufficient material to do that. So we've relied entirely on molecular evidence for that as a new species. Well, one of the, the problems that we do have is, uh, and this is something that's uh, quite common in alien and invasive species, is that they're immature. They're not mature in the, in the, uh, the country where they've been found, uh, such as Europe. And this is where molecular methods are very good. You can either do the DNA barcoding or the uh, mitogenome work uh, that we've done. Secondly, uh, there is a modern part about mitochondrial genomes. Uh, this was done by Romain Gastino uh, in Poland. What I like uh, in this research is that we combine the results of field expeditions uh, by Laurent Charles and Enrico Rousier, traditional techniques by Leigh Windsor, and molecular techniques uh, by Delphine Jay and Romain Gastino. Uh, real teamwork. Well, my name is Romain Gastino, so I'm a French uh, scientist working in Poland right now. My background actually is a PhD in biology of organism, and uh, it was really focused on a very narrow group of uh, diatoms as microalgae. But then I expanded my skills to genomic and bioinformatics, which is how I ended up working with Professor Justine on this uh, flatworm topic. Actually, what we used are next generation sequencing method. Uh, instead of just molecular barcoding, as people have been doing for a couple of decades now, which was a very efficient and useful technology. Uh, instead of sequencing single gene, what we try to do on each and every of the samples we had, and especially the new species we discovered and described, was to sequence complete mitochondrial genomes. Uh, in the past, people were using the cytochrome oxidase one gene as molecular barcode for molecular taxonomy. He, and this is mitochondrial gene, of course, and here we sequenced the full chromosome, the full mitochondrial chromosome using uh, second mostly generation uh, type of uh, next generation sequencing. When scientists uh, describe a new species, uh, they have to give a name, uh, which is uh, since uh, Linnaeus, uh, in Latin. Uh, for a blue species uh, from Mayotte, we chose Mayotensis, which simply means from Mayotte. For the black species from France and Italy, uh, we wanted to do something in relation with the uh, current uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, first, first uh, most of our research was done when our laboratories were in lockdown. Uh, also, uh, this species has potential to become invasive and spread all over the world. Finally, uh, we were all affected by the pandemic and we wanted to pay homage uh, to the victims. So uh, we chose the name Covidum. The fact that we describe a new species, uh, Diversi bipalium myotensis, from a remote island in the Indian Ocean will surprise nobody. In contrast, uh, describing a new species from Europe uh, is more exceptional. In addition, this species, Umbertium covidum, is an alien species. It is not the first time uh, that an alien hammerhead flatworm is described from specimens uh, in the country they invaded. Uh, this was the case uh, for Bipalium QNC, named after the Kew Botanical Gardens uh, in UK, 
or Bipalium uh, Pennsylvanicum, named from, for Pennsylvania in the US. Uh, in both cases, we know that these species originate from Asia. Even worse, uh, there is no confirmed records of Bipalium uh, Pennsylvanicum in Asia, meaning that the species are spread over several states in the USA, but has never been collected from its land of origin. The same is true for our new species, Umbertium covidum. We have tried to find uh, mentions of this very characteristic black species in the literature. Uh, to date, uh, we have only found uh, a very few possible records uh, in Far East Asia, but no definitive proof that it is the same species. This illustrates the main problem with uh, invasive species. They proliferate in the country they invade because they find abundant food and have no enemies, even when they are rare and discreet uh, in their land of origin. Well, what I can say, well, formally, I'm a, first of all, a nature lover. I've always been very in biodiversity and nature since I was a child. So I have to confess that I one of those lucky people and that have been capable to translate their passion and make it their work. I mean, I'm being very lucky, I would say, during my, my experience, I had the chance to work in different institutes that helped me to grow up in the scientists that I'm at the moment. And uh, very great experiences, for example, when I was in Spain and the Biological Institute of Evolutionary Biology and the Natural History Museum in London. And, and since 2018, and now I'm a research fellow at uh, um, the, the, the Daphne Department at Padua University. And what else I can say? Uh, uh, my, I define myself an entomologist, as, but despite, the, the, despite this, I definitely love everything about biodiversity uh, in general. And my specific uh, field of research is focused on uh, beetles, coleoptera, their, their diversity, functional morphology, and many applied side in applied entomology. I have to confess that recently, well, since I moved in uh, to, to Padua, I started devoting part of uh, my interest in invasive species. And this, this is one of the reasons that brought me here, because it's one of the discoveries that they did that allowed us to publish this paper. Well, submitting a paper to, uh, to PRJ is great. Uh, at the end, we have a nice, nice message uh, telling you that it's time to have a good coffee a well-deserved copy, um, and it works. I believe I convinced already many of my colleagues uh, to publish uh, in PRJ. Uh, in addition, um, I am also an, an academic editor for PJ uh, because I am a full partisan of open access uh, in science, uh, as long as it is not scandalously expensive. Uh, I published my uh, first paper in PRJ in um, 2013, and I paid my uh, personal subscription then. And since uh, then, uh, I never had to pay again, uh, except when we published very, very long papers. I definitely recommend uh, other people all over Europe at any time they, they come across something unusual, to send us an advice telling, telling us that, okay, we found something strange in our garden. Please, can you check it and let, and let us know?